Hello, everyone. This is the Empty Gallery podcast with Daniel Suarez and Henry Pucknell. And we have our, f- what was it, our fifth guest? Third, third or- guest. Third guest? Yeah. Oh, really? I feel like it's, I feel like we've done. Yeah. Uh, okay. So we have our third guest with us. His name is Peter Hanmer. He's an artist and sculptor living in, what is it, the Northeast? Yeah, Northeast. Uh, Quite close to Newcastle. Newcastle. Uh, Henry, um, sorry, Peter, um, would you like to tell us a bit about your work and what you do and so on? Yeah, um, I am a, obviously a, a sculptor. I make, I would suppose the best way to describe myself is I make these sort of fantastical installations, sculptures and models um, out of various materials, some uh, more uh traditional some less so um and within these sort of worlds i create um i like to reflect an idea or ideology or something in the real world but with sort of generally miniature figures um doing some sorts of mischief um yeah uh, that's that's basically what i as an overview what what i what i do <laughs> Yeah, together, didn't we, at uh, UCA? Yeah, yeah, Peter was in and the year above us. Peter was in the year above. And, uh, yeah, I I, um, I remember seeing your work in shown at the at the University Gallery. Um, you did this big... I think there was a kind of... I don't know, it always reminded me of... Um, I mean, that was... Something... I think it was this one, actually, yeah. Peter, it Peter, reminded this... me of... Go on. P, this was your third year final piece, wasn't it? Yeah, I had two. I had this one and that one. Yeah, yeah. we used to make bones only, wasn't it? Yeah. it I, I always thought it was very like political, even though I never read into it too much. Uh, because I was kind of, I, I just didn't read into work, artwork. But then I had this whole shtick where I was like, right, I want to see what I can take from it visually. <laughs> but like, I always... I always um, thought it was very politically charged um, or that there was some kind of story being told, like a, some sort of fable or something. Hmm. Uh, would you say that's true? Yeah, no, I, abs- absolutely. I mean, whatever I make, I, I don't, and I, I've got a lot of respect actually for artists who just use their imagination to do whatever. But for me, I, I, I like to have like a narrative or story behind the work um i mean in these particular pieces i mean this piece uh was called uh failures failure shrine um it was sort of the design was based on like various churches i i found on online and cathedrals um and and inherent with the using bone animal bones to make work there's a sort of um there's like an ongoing sort of uh joke that whatever these protagonists do they're already dead and it lends itself to sort of wasteland, you know, thing. Yeah. For this, um, maybe more easier with this, but like in this particular piece, you know, you around the building, there is basically nothing just remains. And then the only things that are happening are on, on, are on and around the building. And then you've got these figures going up to the top, you know, and at the top, there's this character. And then within the temple, there's like some fool's gold. You know, so it's kind of like, you know, I was thinking at the time uh, I'd watched this uh, film by the philosopher Zizek called The Pervert's Guide to Ideology. Oh, is that um, uh, Slavloy Zizek? I've heard yeah. of this film. Yeah, I've yeah. never I've only seen clips from it, but it seems very interesting. He's an interesting yeah. one. Slavloy Zizek, the guy who's always like, sniff, sniff, sniff the ideology. And he's, um, he's like big into communism and stuff. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, um, uh, but he made quite an interesting point about, and, and this goes actually back to Marx and all those sort of things, this idea of, you know, when it comes to like capitalism, that is a human invention, hmm. but it's not actually, it's not related to natural law. You know, it's like, so like the, the current system basically is a sort of, we can, you can make as much, you know, you can make as much money as you want, but it's, you know, the planet's still still dying. There's sort of a disconnect. It's like a false consciousness. Is that the word? It's sort of, um, 
you know, it's like anything can be sacrificed, I think was the quote, up to our lives, up to nature in the pursuit of capital. And yeah. that's like false, like a false economy, if you like, because in the direction we're going in, it's sort of like, you know, it's like this money is worthless if the planet's burning, you know? So it was that yeah. sort of joke. Uh, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. That's, that's like the ideology of capitalism. Yeah. Um, mm. Yeah, I, I agree that the, the, um, the, the infinite, you, um, I used to listen to him quite a lot as well, but there's a kind of like uh, unlimited, um, unrestricted use of like uh, resources, natural resources and stuff like that. So like but cutting down of rainforests is all permitted and all of that sort of thing. Um, yeah, there's, there's all kinds of ways that, the, that, they, that they do this sort of thing. I, the, the thing that annoys me the most is the way they... Um, I don't know much about about how this sort of thing works, but the um, the way they would like artificially manipulate like the markets and stuff like that, and like there's all this debt as well. Like I don't understand like how how the the economy can be run on debt, so they can allow major large parts of the population to be in debt to the banks and all, and so on and for things to still be somehow continuing. I, I don't there's, get there's, it. There's um much. there's more there's more money if you're borrowing against the future. Mm, um, so if you're if you're borrowing money that hasn't been made yet but it's like sort of guaranteed to be made yet then like the amount of money you have in the moment to spend is greater um mm. but then if things collapse in the future then it's like oh it's bad like, news yeah yeah. 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 yeah yeah no that's very that's very interesting no i'm glad you've explained that because um yeah i never got to i i, I sort of saw this one up close but um not not in detail enough uh i remember you, i remember seeing you making it and i was like holy shit um because like yeah just the whole structure is looks looks amazing yeah it's um, like it's like it's like a, it's like a kind of like saint paul's cathedral um about like bones yeah yeah i mean that's basically what the, i wanted the structure to like look like you know i mean there's yeah i enjoyed making um well at the time i did enjoy making but at the time you know obviously it was coming up to my degree show i remember just like oh god am i gonna finish this because um yeah originally it was meant to be this piece and this piece were actually originally going to be as part of the original plan were going to be one piece you know like a giant model but in the end because of time and and the way it worked they they looked better on their own i mean yeah they were they were they were good to do um i remember this one this one impending desolation got showed in an exhibition that andrea organized with good gustav metzger you know that oh yeah yeah when um yeah gustav mexico uh came down to uni um in, was that 2014 13 i think it would have been 13, 13, I, 13 would uh, 14 i think <laughs> I, it feels like a long time ago <laughs> yeah um, oh yeah it's a long time ago now no. um but you, you make a lot more complicated works now like your works are way more complex there's like loads more characters and there's more structures from what i've seen Mm. So have you just sort of grown um, in your yeah. ability, your ability or? Yeah, I mean, it's sort of, yeah, I mean, originally they were all about the models, you know, and I love models, you know, it's, there's something about them. But what, what happened when I, because I did an MFA at Newcastle University, mm. and this is sort of when I broke with the bone work, as it were, when I decided yeah. that, you know, I mean, and this relates to something Henry was talking to me about. Um, I, I, I don't want to say it played itself out, but I wasn't getting any enjoyment from it. Yeah, so, you, you, you've, sort, you've, you've sort of moved away from the kind of Tessa Farmer um, inspired uh, bones, bone set pieces, bone sculptures, to more of a kind of like, I'd say kind of like a Chapman Brothers-esque, uh, like casted models. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, models and set pieces like yeah. uh their, like their massive hell di dioramas and stuff yeah i mean they they are um an influence um but um yeah no I, there was a yeah when i was when i went to do that mfa i mean it was a funny experience i mean it was a funny moment because i was literally out walking with a friend um and and this actually plays into something else you you, you you're gonna ask later on you know the way i found all the bones was on walks like in the northumberland countryside and on the on the on the beach, you know, I remember once I was walking along the beach, and it was after a storm, and there was like twenty 
different seabirds washed up. I mean, it was sad, but very sad. But you know, this uh, you know, but you know, as far as materials, it it was you know very easy to get a lot of bones very quickly. Mm. Um, but uh, I remember, yeah, it was it must be two thousand and fifteen or sixteen. I, I was just um, I just come across. I think it. I don't know, it was like a dead badger or something like that. And I was just there, like, picking up these bones and just shoving them in a bin bag. And I was just, I was just like, I'm not enjoying this anymore. <laughs> I'm tired of this. I want to try and do... It's not that I don't like these this series of work, you know? I mean, I think they're good. But, um, you know, and, and this plays a bit into my interest in politics and that, that sort of side of things in philosophy. I think I... I'd reached the limitations of talking about those sort of issues with this sort of work, if that makes yeah. sense. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, I think it's sometimes with the bones and whatever, you know, you just get lost completely in the spectacle. And then I think there's yeah, still has to a point. And but but there's, there's something really intriguing about skeletons as well in themselves. Like I, people just immediately look at them and they're like, Ooh, look, Oh, there's bones here. Ooh. And they might, I don't know. It can be more about the bones than the the subject. Maybe I'm not sure. Like, yeah, yeah. I, 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 hmm? Sorry, Karen. No, I find it. I quite like how you've branched out into different. Um, how should I explain that? I don't know. You just you use what? What do you use again? Do you use? Um, is that clay? Well, or? No, I mean originally a lot of these figures use like you know like the action figures like sort of like that as a base. And I, what oh. I'll do is I'll I'll change I'll using uh, there's a putty called milliput, um, which basically sets rock hard, but you can sculpt it onto these things. Like um, wait a minute, I've got props lying around here. So like <laughs> for instance, this little fella. Um, yeah. Oh, I've seen him a few times. Yeah, He's, that's a really cool one. But yeah, you basically sculpt the beak using milliput, and I actually use more i know it sounds strange car body filler now because oh, that's yeah. that straight away um, um peter have you ever used green stuff um it's where it's like a blue and a and a, and a um yellow and you mix them together that's millipod isn't it that's the same it, it's um thing. it's similar but it's um like people use it people use it for warhammer stuff it um it doesn't dry as hard as milliput but um it's supposed to be better for like sculpting like really fine detail mm. Mm. You'll have to, uh, yeah. Um, I'll link you. I'll, yeah. What was it called? Let me just note it's, it down. It's, it's just called green stuff. Green stuff. Okay. Yeah. I, yeah, I'll yeah. Check it out. I mean, I'm always happy to find new ways. But yeah, I mean, basically, that gives you, and it's sort of a similar thing to the Chapman Brothers in a sense. I remember they bought big bags full of plastic, tiny plastic um, figures, and then they would use those as a base to build on. It saves a lot of time. I mean, I, I've done some figures are more from scratch than others. I mean. We'll we'll talk about probably talk about in a bit, but like my I mean I'll I'll um go through this lot a bit, but um if you go back to sort of I suppose my I'm just trying to find a particular figure because these locations good. are really good as well. Yeah, so atmospheric. But like you see this figure, um the the beaked uh, soldier sort of character there, um. He, like, for instance, there is part of Plato's Lair and this piece and Plato's Lair Redux. I had, like, I had, like, um, um, I needed a sort of, like, like a, a guard sort of character. And basically, I got loads and loads of David Tennant, Doctor Who. Um, <laughs> he was always wearing that suit. And it was sort of a great base to just add on to. And again, it saves a lot of time because you can do it from scratch, but this sort of work, why wouldn't you use something that's already there and save yourself <laughs> yeah. a lot of time? Because this, this sort of work take, takes forever as it is, which is sort of a joke about like when I went, going back to when I went back to the MFA and, and changed my practice up. Part of my reason originally for going there and changing up is I wanted to start making quick work like, you know, faster work, and that didn't happen in the end, because <laughs> these take even longer than than the bones. Um, but, uh, yeah, no, when I went to um, do my MFA, one of my tutors there, um, Irene Brown, who is really good, uh, really good at uh, her job, 
she was she very much saw the potential in some of my work to like come off the um the model and break into the real world you know like like play with our idea of immersion and bring these events which reflect our own world anyway because they're all meant to be human in a sense mm. but into our real lived experience but they're, mm. they're different enough so it's like yeah he's maybe talking about this sort of issue but it's there's enough distance for people to feel semi-comfortable so it's like a good yeah good trick it's a bit like um i don't know if you've read it but i haven't read it myself but i know the story like gulliver's travels mm. you know that's you know yeah. a little little uh, island full of little people who are doing yeah. absurd things which you know relate to i mean he was i mean the author jonathan swift was taking shots at at um at like organized religion and various other things of his time it's it's a allegory for using mm. different but recognizable figures uh, I, yeah mm, there's there's um something about allegories and fables they 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 have a way of they have a way of talking about um our lives but being completely um fantastical or i don't know what the word is being completely surreal and um mm. and uh looking like they shouldn't really have anything to do with our experiences but like really you look at this sort of thing and you i don't know what it, I, it's such a complex i think it's something that we really don't understand fully is mm. how um stories and it's mostly books uh, do you read any anything any literature that inspires your work or anything like that because um, I, uh, yeah i mean from a i mean there's there's the sort of like more political and philosophy texts i read and then i, I as a general sort of influence the books um which i loved as a kid and even more so now of uh, terry pratchett huge influence and his sort of fantastical world the disc world was all about our world really he just put a fantastical yeah. setting to it you know? it's like it's like fan it's like fantasy realism isn't it mm. yeah yeah yeah, so, yeah. i mean uh, yeah yeah um but yeah other than that um yeah, I mean, I, I love I love fantasy and science fiction, but I'm also very interested in politics and philosophy. So it's sort of, you know, it's been a way for me to like blend these, like um, things that I find fascinating and what I enjoy doing. I enjoy the world world building as much as I enjoy talking mm -hmm. about these issues. But I don't think back in the day I was all about. I remember I had collection of like sculpture dragons, you know, and that sort of thing. Um, yeah. I've still got them somewhere in a box. Um, but I, as I got older, you know, I want, I wanted the work to have some meaning, not just be a wonderful imagination. And, and again, that's not to take away from amazing artists. I mean, I don't know if you've seen the concept art for the Lord of the Rings. I mean, damn, these yeah. guys are so talented. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, or yeah. concept art for computer games is amazing a lot of the time. But, the Lord of the Rings has its own uh, has its own meaning behind it as well, though, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, was... I mean, yeah. Some people like um, like look down on that. I remember a conversation I had with um, in a friend, but she was like, "Yeah, but Lord of the Rings, it's just it's just fantasy. Who cares?" But at the center of that whole story is a story of addiction, you know, because mm. that the ring works like a drug, mm. you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's interesting. Um, so, you know, it's, it's, um, yeah, I, I, yeah, I mean, I, I won't, I won't go down that rabbit hole of like insulting maybe some critics who just don't have an imagination. Um, oh no, but I, I understand that. I have some friends who won't watch, uh, who won't watch Star Wars. I had a friend who, who wouldn't, who said he wouldn't watch Star Wars because it's like not based in reality. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of like well it kind of is because if, if you watch the story there's this republic and there's all these like conflicts going on and and all this stuff that you would only understand when you're an adult really like, yeah, when yeah. i rewatched it i was like oh this is what's going on in star wars oh i didn't know that yeah i always i always feel like the empire um, is supposed to be like the british empire and the rebels are like um like trying to f f um found america yeah. Well, I mean, I think George Lucas, I think I read an interview about this. George Lucas was specifically thinking of the Nazis when, you know, yeah, when that's he, what I thought, yeah. you know, it's like, the, you know, the stormtroopers, stormtroopers. Yeah, yeah definitely. Fa fascism. Yeah. 100%. yeah. I mean, I'm and, a big, 
Um, I like, uh, I do enjoy Star Wars. Um, well, bits of it. That's another rabbit hole, but uh, I love the original movies. Um, and I enjoy Rogue One as well. I enjoy that one. Um, yeah, that was a good one. That was good. Um, but I, I'm actually a bit, I grew up uh, in a family who loved Star Trek. So, you oh, know, yeah. like Next Gen and for me, my favorite Deep Space Nine, you know. And, you know, I think there's, you know, that, that sort of, they're talking about real, you know, the, the whole, the politics and, and ethics and whatever, that's all meant to reflect the real world. I mean, especially the original, original series, you know, with, you know, obviously having different um, uh, uh, races represented, you know, in a time when it wasn't happening, you know, so. Yeah, when well, there was so much, um, um, uh, yeah, racism and stuff. Yeah, yeah. So I, I kind of always thought of it that way as well. When they had the diff, there was a very interesting way of approaching that through having different, um, yeah, different races and so on in 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 Star in Star Trek. And I think Star Wars is really interesting and really does that in a very interesting way. There's like, it's like this incredibly diverse. I know everyone. They're all like aliens and people from different planets and but they're all living together and it, it's i find it very interesting um yeah. that whole thing well a vision, uh, a vision of a better a better future which i don't know if you've seen some of the newer star trek but um it's almost forgotten what it was what it what the vision what it was for in some ways mm. um yeah some of the newer star trek it's quite um the whole point of Star Trek was to reflect a better, better future. I mean, still have conflicts and whatever else, but striving to be better. Um, but um, yeah, anyway, no, no, that's a, that's a different new, podcast. New, new, new Star Trek is just yeah. like spaceships, pew, 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 pew. You know, it's not like it's not like ethical dilemmas. Where it's like, well, if, is Data really a person? You know, can we let the scientist guy take him off and take him apart? What if he dies? Like, shouldn't Data ever say in it being taken apart? <laughs> blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah. Now, let's have a, let's have an episode where we sit down. And um, discuss this, you know. A new Star Trek's like, explosions. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, I, I don't mind the big explosions. You know, I just want the story. You know, yeah, as yeah, well, yeah. You know? So I think what we're trying to say is that, like, the best, the best, um, the best fantasy and sci-fi has, um, uh, like, some sort of political uh, angle. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. even the stuff that isn't trying, I think. Um, it doesn't have to, you know, but I think even as you were saying earlier, Dan, you know, I mean, even things which you don't think are necessarily political are political in a sense, you know, because yeah. you know, they reflect us, you know, it comes from us. It's not, it doesn't come out of the ether, you know, um, mm -hmm. hence with your friend, it's a bit like, you know, no, Star Wars was written by, you know, a real person. You know, it's like, I mean, I remember going back to your discussion with, with um, your last guest and like AI and all that sort of thing. That's a, a different rabbit hole. But um, it's almost like, you know, if it gets to a point why the, when these things are in control, I mean, part of the problem is that these are still originally they're made by humans. Therefore, don't they reflect our flawed ethics? So. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, that is another rabbit hole. We could, oh God, that, that can never end. I mean, I was going to say now, like, is it, are they going to uh, be better than us or be the same as us? Or, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's um, so Peter, something I was uh, wondering was, uh, do all your sculptures and set pieces start out as drawings? Or do you tend to start assembling the um, set pieces and let them sort of naturally develop? Uh, um, just from like a like a, a preconception or like an idea that, idea that you've had i will actually share with you something which relates to one minute not that um one minute uh, uh yeah i mean they what the, there all right there we go is this coming up sorry is this coming up on your screen? Am I sharing this or is, am I sharing something else? Oh, I, I, you can only um, see that silhouette. It's 13, picture 13, Plato's Lair. No, no, no. Um, I've stopped. I'll share something else for a minute. Yeah. But it'll sort of, you know, right. Like, there's a sort of, 
as a starting point, I mean, this is very nicely done because this is for a proposal. It's actually a lot of stick figures, you know? I, I don't do beautiful... Can you see this, by the way? Yeah, yeah. well, um, yeah, I'm blown away. Yeah, um, me too. Well, I, I can't take full credit for this particular thing. My my mum is a graphic was a graphic designer, so she helped with this particular. All right. Yeah, but you know the way it starts is you know I'm drawing literally um, like stick figures. You know, on a I'll have an idea around a particular subject, and then I'll start doing some sort of scribbles. You know, basically on a bit of paper. Like I could have this guy here doing this, smashing a window, but I'm not. They're not like beautiful drawings or anything. They're just a way for me to work stuff out. And mm. then once I've decided on a particular, um, like a uh, particular idea or proposal or, or whatever, that then I'll, then I'll, then it's more about I'll start assembling bits. You mm. know, I mean the good thing about the models is that. Because it's it's almost like it, this even more so with the old bone work work it's like Lego, you know you've got these parts so you're mm. sticking them together and you're like this looks better at this angle, my head doesn't look good there I'll snap that off move it you know to a different different angle, um but you're yeah I mean if you come come in like in the very early stages of you making like a model or something what you'll probably walk in and there'll be like a desk with like like two giant boxes on to represent a house or or something. And I'm just there with like the sort of like the base figures, like placing them spaces, trying to work out how I'll need to change them and yeah. carve them or, or dremel them, you know, or, or, or whatever. I mean, I get, I get fancy when it's like a, for a, like a particular, particular proposal, you know, like for this, for instance, I put it in for, um, uh, fingers crossed for this, for the, the makers open like the Jared made this open oh, and nice. so obviously I wanted to make a good impression you know so it was like uh, I was like ah I remember just like saying oh ah, mom uh, you know could you uh, you know here's some here's some crap drawings can you make this look really nice <laughs> you know it's sort of you know uh, help me make this really nice and you can get some get some really I mean maybe if I can get like bring up like a novel I mean that's for, that, that's the sort of like starting point you know it's that sort of scribbled sort of thing um i'm sure there was another one on here but i i don't seem to have it anymore but that photo um, is great so is this for yeah. a um is this for like an up-and-coming piece of work yeah i mean this is a piece actually uh, the original idea for the piece came a long long time ago but um you know i i couldn't well to make it because it's quite big you know it, it's like you need like a bit of funding behind it like someone like the jail would i guess i mean i'll try and i mean to be honest if i didn't don't get this thing i will try and make it anyway probably <laughs> at, some, at some point but um um yeah no this was a sort of um a, a design um i wanted to like blur the lines in between a model and installation hmm. you know so it's like, and it sort of plays into this particular idea. I mean, it may be difficult to tell this, but like within this building, I'm going to have like uh, a family of sort of uh, straw men, huh. um, as it were. And like straw man, like you, you've probably all heard of the straw man argument. Like when you're like, this person's to blame for this problem, but not really. It's just a distraction. Now, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it, it's, um, it's, um, it's uh, misinterpreting someone's someone else's argument in, in yeah, order yeah. to in order to take it down yeah so what i thought i'd be quite cool to sort of play with that and literally have a situation where you've got this family of straw men or something like that within like a building and it's literally being mobbed you mm. know um and i you know i'm you know as i say i try to reflect the times but i also you know with that sort of the way this sort of set the way i've tried to set up this model is is a situation where, you know, you've got characters outside the model, like trying to enter the model and they're, they're making their world smaller. So it's almost like a double um, metaphor in some senses, you know, it, um, obviously there's going to be, um, with this, what I'm interested in, and this is part of the reason why I jumped from like the bone work to what I'm doing now is the, the you know, the character opportunities are limitless. You know, as far as 
new designs, new figures, there's less um, like limitations in that. Mm-hmm. Um, and and what I, what I can what I can do to reflect certain um, beliefs or ideologies or or system or, or whatever. Um, so yeah, that that's the sort of if you want a nice sort of um, well, I mean, within this, uh, it's it's probably difficult to tell. You know, you've got situations where I thought it'd be quite funny to have like uh, I don't know if you ever watched those sort of news reports where like um, there's like 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 I think it was on like the Daily Politics or something like that, and you've got like people discussing something um, about oh, like hard talk or or, or um yeah, no, I mean like, um yeah 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 well, yeah they get everyone around the table and. I thought it'd be quite funny to literally have that situation where they're, they're doing like something like this right next to this mob yeah. <laughs> situation. It's just like, yeah, let's just report on this. And then I don't know if you've found this as well. Often on these sort of news shows, it'll be, it'll be the person with the loudest voice rather than, you know, rather than the person who's most to say. So I was thinking like for one of the characters there, I could have like someone like just a, whose head is just a map, you know, it's just. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That'd be good. That'd be good. Um, yeah, but yeah, yeah. No, that, that's basically, this is what it looks like nicely, but before this, there'll be just loads of little stick, stick man sketches, the actual sort of, the sketches you'll see after the fact, like, which I did, are, are generally, they're like, some of them are inspired by the sculptures are already made, um, which I've done in the past, and then sometimes they're, you know, really inspired by an image or, or like, um, um, you know, or something I've seen online that's interesting. Um, you know, I'll I'll share share those. Is, is that and, something um, you proposed uh, to a gallery or an opportunity or like stuff? It was like to, it was to the, it, it was to the Joe Woods Makers um, prize, right, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, we'll we'll see about that. I mean, uh, but uh, it's just an example. Anyway, yeah. I mean, those the, I I don't know if you see that drawing. These drawings are much more. You know, they're not inspired by a sculpture. They're inspired by something I've seen, as it were. Or, or, yeah, um, yeah. My like, you know, I remember that, you know, those recently in Newcastle, like a few months ago, there was these, like the, uh, what is it? The, there were like basically white nationalists, you know, protesting against people tearing down sculpture, statues. I mean, the joke with this is the statue they were trying to protect was... <laughs> the guy who abolished slavery, <laughs> helped abolish slavery in, in the, in the, in the, um, in the UK, like, uh, Earl Grey or, or whatever. But anyway, it was, um, some of them like that. A- anyway. Yeah. Um, mm. so I think I've probably answered your question. <laughs> yeah. That, that, that massive one you, um, you showed the photos, the Photoshop, um, sketch. Um, yeah. If you were still using bones, you'd never be able to make something with that many different figures in it because the figures would just take too long to make. But uh, if you're, yeah, if you're just adapting existing figures, uh, yes, it's so much easier to get um, get more figures into the piece, get more figures into well, the piece. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think you touched on earlier whether, the, like you said, obviously the Chapman has been an influence. But actually, I would say that as far as um, influences go, a lot. I, I, I take a lot of influence from. Um, wait a minute. Open. Come on, open. Room. That set piece as well. Um, the free is is it free boards that kind of click together to make it easier to transport? Yes. Yeah, yes. yeah I picked up on that. That's a very good idea. Okay. And then um, another thing you were saying, um, the the family of straw men in a tower block. First thing that makes me think of is um, Glenfield Tower. It's just like yeah, yeah. dark. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's dark yeah. stuff. Dark stuff. Yeah, I'm not so that. Yeah. No. Um. Yeah. Abs- absolutely. That. I mean. Basically, that idea of othering, huh. in a sense, is is basically what that whole piece is about. And because, because it's in a sort of fantastical sort of scape, as I mentioned earlier, you can maybe deal with things which <laughs> you couldn't so much in if if I. Well, I mean, there was like you know maybe deal with things a little easier than um, if you were using real, maybe just directly using humans for it or, or mm. whatever. And, I, and the good thing about the straw man thing is because it's open, you know, it's all you can put on whatever you want onto that 
this idea of othering. It's not, I'm not talking about this group or that group or that group or that group. I'm not, you know, it's, it's, you know, it makes it more universal. Yeah. Because you're using like an analogy. You, um, yeah, you're not, um, you're not, uh, straightforwardly depicting a certain group. Mm -hmm. It could kind of be like, yeah, any group. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, this image I'm showing now, it's sort of like, I'm, a, I'm, I'm influenced quite a lot. I mean, the Chandler Rivers are an influence, but like, this is an American artist called John Alexander. And, I, and this is a sort of like, that sort of, you know, multiple characters, but obviously a political edge and all these sort of things is something I'm more, that's directly influenced me more, more so, you know, um, but like, I don't know, those artists, like the new objectivists who in, who were like around just before the rise of Nazi Germany, those sort of artists were using like oh, Yeah, like um, some of those, like Otto Dix, George Gross, these guys are some of my favorites as well. Yeah, they, 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 well. They, they were like making characters and stuff, weren't they? Yeah, like really um, like uh, characters with really strange faces and stuff. Mm. They're, they're incredible, actually. They're some of my favorite. Um, do, you, do you find that um, your work takes is following on this sort of I don't know if I want to call it a tradition, but like it sort of follows on from because I was really into like uh, uh, I think his name is Peter Bruegel and uh, Hieronymus Bosch. Yeah, Bosch. That whole, yeah. Those miniatures, they, they're like miniatures. They could be sculptures, you know what I mean? But they're like it's a painting, but there's tons of little, there's nothing like those in that period. Well, there probably is, but I don't know of, but there's completely unique for that period of history. And like, there's all these miniatures and like, they're just situations and they painted, painted allegories a lot. And, mm -hmm. and uh, some of my favorites out of that are the Bruegel ones, the, mm -hmm. when he write, he did like the seven sins and yeah, he did yeah. one, one picture for each like lust and, gluttony and so on and oh, they're just great they're really oh, good yeah. yeah no i mean yeah. no i love i love uh, his work uh, bosch even more so i mean i recently shared on instagram you know because i've been doing this thing every week where i try and share an artist who's inspired me or a friend or whatever and i recently just shared his work and uh, you know huge i mean he's sort of like the what is it the, the granddaddy of this sort of art in some ways you know he was yeah he was um first i mean I mean, obviously, my reasons for making work are quite different. I'm not trying to scare people about them burning in hell. But, yeah. um, you know, but, you know, I mean, those the imagination. I mean, God, yeah, no, I, I that, that sort of, it's, it's fantasy imagery, if you like, but to a point as allegory, you know, and him and Bruegel. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm trying to remember one of his names was work, but the Hay Wayne isn't one of, Bru isn't that one of Bruegel's? So good um yeah no um yeah no I, I yeah i mean i would say i do follow in that in that tradition i mean i've tried to sort of carve out my own sort of i mean carving out my own niche shall we say going forward i mean i, I haven't seen many i mean yes you mentioned the chamber brothers but many artists who do exactly maybe what i'm trying to aim for like that combination of model installation jumping about and um, if anything, like I said, I think there's been more painters who have gone down that line. Yeah, um, I, I was I was going to say that the um, the uh, the big plus of sort of like Bruegel or Bosch um, is it's like a painting, and there's like multiple different areas of interest. Uh, but painting, I think painting is a lot easier to to like um, show on social media. Uh, mm. I think with your work, Peter, it's a shame because. Um, there's so many different characters and things going on. It's almost mm. like the pictures you take can't do the whole thing justice. You kind of have to see it in person. Mm. And um, that's why I think, yeah, that's why lockdown has been. Multiple. Yeah. I'm sure you take multiple pictures though. Yeah. Multiple pictures, but I think, I feel like um, it's still, um, it's, it's still hard to you get. Like, to it. It. You need to you see need it in person. Yeah. You need to be there. You need to be mm. there. That's why lockdown has been such a pain in the ass. Well, I don't, I don't fully um, agree. Some of these pictures are, this is a very good photograph. Yeah. You know? And it's very easy to tell what's going on from a photo. So, I mean, I, I know what you mean, Henry, but I think, I think the photography is, you've, you've obviously yeah, put yeah, a lot of time. Yeah. Photography. Yeah. The yeah. photography is really good. Yeah. Whereas yeah. if you're photographing a painting, it's easy. You just, yeah. Them, you know? But, 
this yeah. is a, yeah there's a bit of a challenge but i think that's like i mean there's multiple challenges with your work you're like thinking about transporting it and how to put it together and how to make the models and so on and so how did you say you source the models again you, do you just have a how do you source the models um like what for the for the figures i mean a lot of those are originally originally like they're like stuff that i found got on ebay and car boot sales and whatever else and then and then like and then sculpted onto them or changed them and used mm -hmm. those literally as a base um after i've made a figure what i'll often do is i'll cast bits of it or cast the whole body so i can reuse it in a different sculpture yeah. also i can change just a tiny bit like that's how you get multiple figures not fast but faster you know because mm -hmm. you can you know, you've got this arm which will attach to another figure if it's wearing a suit, if you like, and you can just attach it to another figure and it's a different figure. Same with the heads, you know, what I'll do is once I've made a head, I'll cast it. I mean, that's what I did with the most recent, um, I've, you know, the, I've done some little sculptures with like little skulls, you know, um, I can, I can share that actually. Um, now that you're in the casting business as well, Peter, it's a, it's a downward slope to getting a 3D printer. At some oh. point, at some point, you're going to get a 3D printer. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've used I've used one but one before when I was at, on my on my MFA. I mean, I, I think personally, I, I would embrace that, mm. you know, yeah. technology. You know, because all is hundred percent, hundred percent. From my point mm. of view, it, it'll just um, it will, you know, just speed up what I can do in certain ways. It's already, um, it's, already, it's already being abused by um, people printing Warhammer figures off and stuff. Um, geez, have you seen the way they're making uh, uh, buildings nowadays, though? They're like building them out of Lego and real quick, like a child would make a fucking Lego, Lego, Lego house. Like, yeah, I, in uh, China. Whenever I make the, get the train up to London, I don't know if they're using 3D printers or what, but whenever I go up to London, I, I, the, the landscape... The, the skyscraper scape changes every time and they've like come so much closer to finishing a building. They're doing it so quick nowadays. Yeah. I don't know how that's relevant, but like the whole, just, I don't know. They must be using technology must just be much, much better for that sort of thing. Now. In, in China, they build each floor individually for like a um, apartment block and then they transport it there and they just, yeah, it literally just like clips together. Mm. So, it's absolutely nuts. Yeah. yeah, Duplo. Yeah, technology is a um, blessing and a curse, shall we say? I mean, I think I suppose as artists, we just have to uh, adapt to it. I, I mean, yeah, I think you touched on this with your previous discussion. I I always think, even though with virtual reality coming in and these sort of things, I still think there's a place for the analog and the real yeah. real object because there's always that part in your mind. Even however good these simulations are. I can't touch that. And until they make holodecks, like Star Trek holodecks, the technology is not quite there. But I suppose, I don't know about the science because I don't read it. I don't, I'm not reading that much, but I suspect at some point they'll be able to like stimulate parts of the mind so you believe you're actually touching things. But, oh God, yeah. yeah. Uh, With the or, whole microchips in the brain or, or, or seeing things that aren't there. Yeah, yeah. I'm quite a ludite. I'm quite like, I... <laughs> Well, yeah, that's another thing. Like, um, I hate to keep bringing up Warhammer all the time, but on this show, but um, yeah, like the analog, um, 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 you know, we've got all these computer games, you know, we've got Starcraft and stuff, but um, Games Workshop are reporting uh, record profits because people want to like build the models like in the physical. They want to touch it. They want to touch it. They want to own cool. the model in the physical. I, I used to collect that stuff. It looks good. It looks really cool. And you can, yeah. keep, you can have it on your, I mean, I really enjoyed the virtual game as well. The mm -hmm. Dawn of War. Really, really oh, yeah, yeah, I played on that. Oh, my God, that was so much fun. And they, 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 they did a Total War as well, but mm. the models, you can't really beat the models, I don't think. The yeah. Model, I think, and a, a, a sort of a need for the analog thing will always be there. Um, yeah, 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 100%. You ever yeah. been to like an artisan's craft, uh, fair or something like that as well, you know? Mm. Uh, mm. It's um, popular. Mm. Yeah, no, I mean, absolutely. I mean, I think, I mean, maybe, again, though, maybe this is me as a, as a person who makes analog work, shall we say, it's been like, please don't disappear. Yeah. I need a job. <laughs> um, but uh, no, I, there is something, I, I, when I did um, 
like uh, Plato's Lair Redux, like the reimagining of the original Plato's Lair, which is in a was in a potting shed at Cheeseburn Sculpture Garden. Mm -hmm. Most of the work in that exhibition, because it was called Digital Cit Citizen, was um, what was like digital work, because it was all about these different realities and and um, ref like uh, you know, I mean, how do we know what is real and not real? And you know, so it was alongside. The ah, so Plato's lab um, yeah, yeah. tied in perfectly with that because yeah, it's, it's a, it's a, um, it's a the viewer. Yeah, whoever's watching, just Google Plato's Lair and look, read up on it on Wikipedia. But um, it's uh, basically like a underground cinema, and the people who are in the cinema um, take that as their reality. They don't see the reality of the um, the world above. Yeah, I mean, well, that, Plato's Lair is my version. Plato's Cave is the... Is oh, Plato's the Cave, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, I'll show you how that, how that worked, actually. But um, was it, uh, there we go. I'm doing some research now into Plato and his idea of the forms and the... What's the other thing? It was the um, oh. allegory of something to do with the forms in the allegory. I can't remember now. Yeah, I mean, I, I read The Republic when I was making this damn thing, and I do know what you're getting at. I just can't remember exactly what, what, what the uh, things were. But, I mean, that, that book, The Republic, like, it, um, you know, it was a fascinating book to riff off. And it's different. Um, he had a lot of, you know, I, I don't want to make this go down a rabbit hole again, but as far as, like, Trump and all these sort of things, Plato was well ahead of the curve about how democracy can sort of destroy itself. You know, he basically yeah. predicted people like Trump, Hitler, and all that sort of thing. He didn't like democracy because it could, you're like the most popular rather than the most best at a job, if that makes sense. That was his mm -hmm. view anyway. But anyway, this, this show, you know, my piece was inside this box. And then, you know, all around it, there were these digital works that also explored the um, nature of reality and these various things. I had no idea Plato's Lair was inside a box. I thought it was like in a, in a shed or something. Like, that was the first version. The first ah, version was in it, yeah. Ah, oh, Pete, you've got to put the a picture of the box outside on your website or something. Um, that's amazing. Like, oh, um, it is, it is it, on my website. It's called Plato's it, Lair Redux. Ah, like, nice. Plato's Lair. So you had to go down there and construct this box out of um, massive MDF panels. Yeah, well, you know, the, the guys at the Baltic, um, you know, this is one of, one of the institutions that have a lot of money, um, you know, and, and staff. So, you know, I had a lot of, there were a lot of people, they, they basically what happened is that for the, for, for the actual construct, I mean, I did a design, how I thought it could work, because this took a lot of persuading the, um, the, uh, the creator, um, Alexandro Vincentelli, who's really cool, you should follow him. But um, he, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, basically they, the, the staff there, made the box outside and then got me in to do the interior so mm. it was sort of like um so outside just a gray box inside when you look in you're in this different reality and mm. for the figures that are within this box um their only reality is this shed they don't know what's going on outside um yeah and I, yeah and it's sort of like i played you know the the, the story of plato's cave about these prayer people tied up to a wall of a cave and their own reality is those flickering shadows is a bit like um, a cinema, which is what I tried to do more so with the second version than the first version. Uh, As you see, there's a sort of a projected, just using a bowl actually and, and like two tiny little figures projected some sort of cinema screen. But uh, yeah, no, as a process to make this um, thing, it was I mean, I remember, I remember saying to the guys, you know, I mean, they asked me, you know, how, how long will this take to make? Oh, and I was like, oh, maybe uh, three or four weeks. You've got two weeks, boy. Oh, <laughs> we, no. <laughs> like, oh, shit. Um, so you had to go down and build it, like, basically on the site. Yeah, no, I mean, again, I had some guys helping the, the external bit and with the interior, interior putting up these boards, for instance, on the wall. Yeah. Um, but after that, it was a case of, you know, me in there with the, cause no one else can do the, put the biggest into place. That's, yeah. that's up to me. So, um, and I, and I did some brick, brick laying. I don't know if you can see properly on here, but, uh, well, you know, uh, like, like up here, you know, behind my tyrant sort of character. Yeah. Um, there's like half bricks and I was like, uh, learning a new career almost <laughs> like bricklaying. 
um, with these, you know, you can get these sort of bricks that are sort of cut in half. So it's like a veneer rather than a real. Ah. Um, I love the, um, I, lo I love the uh, guards up in the guard towers. They're great. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, um, yeah, that was, that was stressful, but you know, I mean, it was, it was great to do, you know, a great opportunity. Do you, think, do you think there's a way we can like explain the whole allegory like on the podcast, like really concisely, like. Yeah, I will, I will do my best. Right. Um, the story of Plato's Allegory of the Cave, um, which comes from Plato's The Republic, which is like the first political philosophy text ever, really. Um, um, some people probably argue with me, but um, basically it's a story about a group of prisoners who are tied up to a wall of a cave. They can't look left or right or behind them. They, they, their only reality is the flickering shadows on the wall in front of them, which are, you know, obviously there's a fire or something behind them. Now, somehow one of the prisoners gets free or is released or something like that. Um, and he, he turns around, you know, um, and then he has to, then he is basically compelled, and this is important, the language is kind of important, to leave the cave and enter into, he starts to see reality for what it is and enter into the light. And for Plato, the sun is analogous to the good. You know, this is enlightenment. And that prisoner is now enlightened. He can see the world for what it really is. Now, basically, um, after that, he is compelled, again, compelled. He doesn't want to go back in. He's compelled to return to the cave and teach his fellow prisoners what he, is, what he has seen. And those, and those prisoners don't believe him, actually, and they'll probably attack him. Um, because yeah, that's interesting. Discovering your, yeah, discovering your reality is, in fact, not real is a scary thought. I mean, oh, and I should have mentioned this, but that prisoner return to the cave is one of Plato's philosopher kings. He believed in a form of meritocracy, like the smartest rule, you know, as in this guy's a philosopher, he should rule, not, mm. not Joe Bloggs or, or, and uh, Donald Trump and, and whoever else. But uh, so, I mean, yeah. I don't agree with his, 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 um, his idea of who should rule, but you can see a lot of his points are mm. very solid, shall we say. Mm. Yeah. But, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I spun off that and basically made my own version of that, playing on some of those ideas and making this sort of uh, alternative reality of um, miniatures living within this potting shed, mm -hmm. either in the original version or or this this version. Um, uh, and I, I was sort of like, you know, this is a sort of continuation from the bones because all these figures have got like beaks growing out of their faces. You know, it's it's. Um, and different beats for different character groups, actually. Um, I think this story of the Plato's cave lends itself to a sort of caged bird metaphor, as much as anything. Um, oh, yeah. um, but like, like, for instance, I mean, it, it's sort of a deep cut, but like my guards only have a beak. They don't have a jaw, bottom jaw. They don't have a voice. They're just drones in space. Hmm. Um, I, I should also, I, I should- Intimidating sort of, drones. Yeah, I should explain that with the piece, there is sort of like three different character groups. I mean, four technically. There's like the citizens who are living in this world, who some of which are trying to escape, some of which who are living in this reality and they decide to make the best of it. They don't know any better. Then you've got the guards who are keeping them there. Then you've got my version of the Philosopher Kings, um, which is not that, yeah, is sort of, this character who's coming back into the shed there's like a few of them um and then of course there's my uh my 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 tyrant who yeah my tyrant and the joke about him is he has exactly the same beak like which is an owl's beak that's what it's based on as um as the philosopher kings because the way i viewed it was kind of like this philosopher king could easily become the new tyrant you know, it's that sort of yeah, ah, oh, that mm. duality, yeah. The way systems um, can become corrupted again, and so on. Yeah, mm. um, but that's a bit of a deep cut, you know. <laughs> I love how yeah. the um the figures in the cinema are in are in plant pots, like they've been kind of like they've been planted, like mm. they can't they can't escape the um the uh, pretend reality. Yeah, yeah. They're like I growing. Mean, uh, it's like they're growing roots into it. Absolutely. I yeah, mean, the, yeah. No, no. That's that's about my like my thought thought process. I mean. The whole allegory reminded me of the uh, when we see a movie, you know, because mm. however long that movie 
fools us into believing it's reality. Mm. You know? mm. um, so it's like the same sort of experience. Um, I think if Plato was alive today, he'd probably tell us to look a bit up a bit more from our screens. So we can, yeah. You know, and, and that kind of that kind of plays into um, us being kind of like rooted to the spot in in, a, in terms of like our political reality as well. Mm. Uh, like um, you know, don't talk to homeless people on the street because they'll just give you a hard time. Uh, when reality, that's like that's like a pretty ethically not very nice thing to do. Um, uh, you know, don't worry about uh, the people sitting in um, Guantanamo Bay or the franchises of Guantanamo Bay. You know. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. No, I mean, Plato is um, complicated, but he's, you know, there's a lot of things in there which are so relevant till the day, mm. to today. I mean, and uh, a Republic's, the Republic's hard to read, but, you know, I mean, I managed to do it, so everyone else can. As well. I might give it a go. I might give it a go. Is it, maybe, if it's an audio tape, then I can, uh, I, can, I can work and listen to it at the same time. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. I will say though, it's sort of like it's a case of like because I listen to it on audio book as well as having an actual copy of the book, um, and it was a case of like winding it back. You know, it's like because he would say something, I was like, "What? What does he mean?" And then uh, yeah, then I listened to a commentary as well. Anyway, uh, sorry. I, I know we have yeah, you... I'm running out of time, so. We're gonna have to wrap up the show um but uh we just figured out that we didn't really go over uh peter's current exhibitions very well at the start of the show um so peter um if you'd just like to show us some of your work that you've been showing at the cheeseburn sculpture garden in newcastle oh, of course time. Yes, I can. Uh, assuming i can find that there we go oh it's disabled again the uh oh, share it's okay there we go Awesome. All right. Um, yeah, but the sort of last thing, and I was uh, um, last thing I've done, which was was major-ish, um, was uh, this new work at uh, Cheeseburn um, Sculpture Garden, which I've exhibited a few times. That's where the original Plato's Lair was, um, and it was. I mean, on one hand, it was just nice to get a show with all this, you know, stuff going on, and artists not being able to show work. I mean, I mean, as far as the piece goes, it was quite, um, it was really just two, like three figures and only two main ones. And there, I mean, this is a bad photo, but it's like, like if you look at the top of this wall, that's where it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the path, the way the wall, the way you walk around, there's like a pathway going through this doorway. Mm -hmm. um, and as you got closer, you'd see basically these two like figures like mass figures with like croquet bats and a cup of tea um just having a having a game a game of uh i don't know what game you'd call it because those are pool balls and not croquet balls uh, but um just like uh the the work the, the work is titled keep your distance and basically that was sort of a play on what's going on right now but also a sort of uh, like tongue-in-cheek sort of I don't know if you remember um, when there was there were celebrities basically telling people to stay at home, you know, stay at home from your from their mansions. Yeah, just, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, and it, oh, that meme, yeah, that was jokes. That was yeah, too yeah. So I I sort of did that a bit with these sort of I suppose that you could call them like uh, almost like a capitalist um, uh, caricature in some ways, you know. <laughs> Big, big uh, croquet match, having a, having a match, you know, wh whacking balls at the at the punters, keep your distance, but we can have have some fun. So it was it was a really fun work to do. I mean, usually there's a lot more. I'd say with some other work, I wouldn't say it's the deepest work I've ever done, but it was it was quite last minute in some ways. It was because they they you know uh, Matthew, the guy who runs the place um, with Joanna, you know, it was like they weren't sure if it was going to open or not at all. So it was like a month or two beforehand, and it was about a month, month and a bit beforehand. And they, they, you know, they asked me if I would like to put something in. You know, I bit their arm off because they wouldn't right now, just showing some work. Mm. Um, so yeah, I made this little, little, uh, little thing, um, which is which is fun to do. Um, one minute, that's it. 
And the yeah, good thing is it's, it's high up on a wall, isn't it? So people can't touch it. Well, yeah, I mean, I think that was, yeah, one of the things t- touched upon, like keeping the work safe. Yeah, basically yeah. with that, they couldn't reach it. I mean, there were some balls on the floor, uh, but those balls, they were, they were meant to be on the floor, but obviously they weren't in their original spots by the end of the, <laughs> end of uh... the show. <laughs> Um, didn't matter, you know, it was like I expected that to happen, but uh, it was kind of like, yep, kids, you know, I, I say kids, but to be honest, adults probably as well. Yeah, probably, yeah. yeah. Um, I, I, I used to put some, some of my work quite high up, and um, yeah, you, you realize that um, how little people actually look up at the sky. Um, they say like dogs can't look up, but it's like almost like humans like can't look up sometimes. Um, so it's good, to, yeah, it's good to put put work in like a field of view that people don't usually appreciate hence all the i mean what you touched on there them being able to see see it the reason the only way this work worked was the fact that i used like yellow and red balls yeah so it was yeah, yeah, yeah. shouted you know it's like i am here yeah <laughs> it would not be if i had used if i just had like a few figures up there no one would have seen me, you know yeah Right into the right in the background. Yellow is supposed to be the, the the primary color that you see first, isn't it? Like boom. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, from that, actually, that relates to exactly what I'm doing right now. I'll sort of turn my computer around because I don't have a good photo of these at all. But um, I will. Uh, I, I don't know. If you can... This is it's just a dramatic view uh, reveal that the uh, workers have been, uh, the listeners have been waiting for. Whoa! Hey, um, hey, um. Peter, can you make that full screen? Um, oh, yes. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Here's me. Uh, a minute. I'll get that sorted out. So, my full screen. No. My full screen? Or... Yeah. Oh, wicked, wicked. So, this is a sneak peek. Sneak peek. Only on the Empty Gallery show do you get sneak peeks like this. Yeah, I mean, I often thought it's like a real shame that work that some of the work that's site specific doesn't, you know, it only exists once. But what I had an idea, and this was basically last year, about you know, almost like shelves, you know, like work that that can be put on a wall, like a painting in some ways. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah, and you could just like you could just stick the shelf up. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, you can, like, you look over there, there's, like, a sort of DIY shelf thing I, I made just for photographing the piece. Ah, uh, that's a great idea, yeah. There's, like, both of those two works you pro- you just saw were, are, like, they both were originally a cheese burn, but it, it's, it's, they've just been sitting around, you know, and it's been, like, you know, why not give them a new context, add a few bits, change a few bits? I mean, they won't be the same, but it'll be... You know, it's a shame just to chuck them on the scrap heap in a way. Yeah, yeah. I especially have to put that time into doing the um, modeling work and the sculpt- sculpting work and stuff. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, as more long term work, I, I've been trying to make, um, th- like, there was plans for me to have, um, like, a, like, a solo show at some point. But, mm. I mean, because of the situation, that's been delayed to God knows when. Mm. Um, but, uh, I, I've been making in my spare time, in my spare time, um, but a sort of a, like a, a tro- been trying to make a zoetrope, like a sculptural zoetrope. I don't know if you've seen work by a particular artist who does a lot of them. Um, what's his name? I can't remember. But um, I've, I've been interested in the idea of animation, you know, and like trying to make the figures, you know, uh, like move. Um, I can I can share a sort of like an image of like. Oh, yeah, I can like, see you doing animation actually. Have you ever thought of do you, do you ever write anything or? I mean, only only so much as for um, like a for like statements and all that sort of thing, or a bit about work. I mean, I I I know I think I know maybe know what you're getting at because obviously these works are all stories in some ways. So. Yeah, and and, and t- tied up in kind of. Um philosophical and political thoughts yeah so it'd be good to do that i mean it's i don't love writing in the same way i love making artwork so i should mm. do it but i i i haven't yet shall we say um let's see if I, no that's the wrong thing um one minute i'll share like some of those i mean these are just 
in like they were like halfway f- like through the progress because uh, I mean this is very very early <laughs> stages. I mean because I don't know anything about like work which moves basically. Um, so I was just trying to do this sort of setup and trying a few things where basically this would maybe be the vision at the end. Like you've got this sort of king followed by the people, quote unquote, because I hate that phrase because it's used by that awful people. It'd be interesting to like, like it'd be a good way of exploring power dynamics between mm. like a leader and, and his people, if you like, mm. who has power over who, because it's a continuous circle. Um, I mean, originally, and I, I think I want to try and do this, is it, I would, would like a situation where it's not flat like that, but it's like a stairway, a never ending stairway that goes around and around and around. Ah. Um, a bit like the Escher drawing in some ways, but like circular. And, and, and like the higher class people would be higher up the steps. Well, it'd be a situation where, the, you know, obviously you'd have the king or politician running up the steps, but it'd be always being followed by the people, you know? So it's kind of a, it's like a cycle, like an interesting yeah, power dynamic. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I mean, that's, that's, I mean, these are some of the like early. Oh, I love the, yeah, I love the stairs that you made. That's great. You know, just trying to work things out. Uh, yeah, it's kind of like people like uh, climbing a social ladder as well. Like they'll never, they can never reach the top. Yeah, I mean, well, yeah, yeah. I mean, or or like the, the it's almost like what ha- what's happened in various revolutions is what what's happened. They've chucked out the old guy, and there's basically a new king now. Mm. Like the revolution has failed because now Stalin's in charge of whoever yeah. you know. It's and it's yeah. the same or Napoleon or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um. But yeah, that that was um, yeah. I've been doing like bits for the Art of Support Pledge, and I've been sort of, and for the, I mean, I w- haven't 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 started making this because I'm not allowed to unless I got the commission, shall we say. But I, I've already started like not well, not started, but maybe like you know, I've been making different figure designs, which will go into various bits of work. So uh... you know, so it's I haven't started, but you know everything I do gets will go into everything because that's the great thing about casting <laughs> and, and various things. Um, yeah, yeah, once I mean, you, once you, yeah. Once you make the cast, you've got them forever. You can, um, yeah, continuously use them. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I think that's probably at this moment, what's, what's happening. Um, plans got canceled, changed, but you know, we, we, we continue. I that's the nature not- of covered. Yeah, 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 and that's where this podcast came from. To be honest, um, me and Dan were bored, and I was like, uh, "Dan, you want to like start a podcast while we're trapped inside?" And he was like, "Yeah, let's do it. Let's do this. Yeah, yeah definitely. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that's basically again. Yeah, I'm doing those little art of support pledge pieces, and I intend to do like the way I worked it out with those tiny sculptures. You've got to do them almost like four at a time. Ah, Every, you know." Um, uh, so it's, it's, I mean, I, I hate this term for all, but it's almost like a factory sort of thing where it's yeah. just like you, you work on this floor and then they'll be finished. It takes less time than working on them individually. If you're like painting the skulls all the time yeah. uh, at the same time and, 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 and that sort of, uh, that sort of thing. But, um, yeah, no, that's, that's, that's what's happening in my art, art world at this moment. Cool. I'm trying to keep busy. Yeah, no, no, no. It's wicked t- you see, you're keeping very busy, like crazy busy. No, no, it's um, it's looking really, really good. It's looking really, really good. All right. So, um, Peter, no, no, thanks for coming on the show. Um, we'll put a link down to Peter's um, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, uh, in the description below, and um, among other links. And other links, yeah, yeah. And uh, hopefully, have you again on sometime in the future. Yeah. Um, well, for the viewer, you viewer if you're checking out this, the podcast for the first time, uh, make sure you check out our previous episodes where we interview um, Aria Kiani and uh, Charlie George because those are uh, those are good episodes, you know. And yeah. uh, we'll see you for the next one. Bye bye. bye. <laughs> that, that's a wrap. <laughs>